Well, as you know, the World Bank has adopted corporate goals, which are reducing and eliminating poverty, as well as achieving shared prosperity for the bottom 40% in a sustainable manner. So clearly issues of sustainability and environment, which underpin the SDGs, are at the core part of the World Bank going forward. And the reason that this is central is because a lot of the entrenched poverty, of the, of the kind of poverty that always does get left behind, is related and linked very much to nature dependent or forest dependent communities, communities that work in either forestry, fisheries, agriculture. 50% of the world's jobs around the world are linked to these sectors. So clearly if we're going to have not just keeping get, getting people out of poverty, but enabling people to stay out of poverty, really long-term well-being, it's absolutely fundamental that we ensure that there's sustainable management of the natural resources and that we ensure the resilience, if you will, of natural systems and ecosystems, that the soil is, is functional, that it's resilient, that there's access to water, and this is what all these livelihoods will depend on going forward. So in order to achieve and to deliver in a, not just a sustainable, but very critically and inclusive way on the bank's uh, corporate goals, we need to factor in the natural uh, assets of the equation. And this means several things. One is taking into account, really, in policy making and investment decisions, understanding natural capital as an asset. And we've been doing a lot of work on the, through the WAVES programs, the Wealth Accounting and Valuation of Ecosystem Services, uh, which is a real partnership. And that has helped very much to evidence the fact that a lot of the economic growth in key countries is, develop, is dependent on better management of the water resources, whether it be through water accounts or forest accounts. It's really changing how countries do, how countries manage their, their natural assets and the kind of investment decisions going forward. And this is particularly critical because as we well know with climate change, we're going to see a lot of these systems and a lot of these services, ecosystem services under greater stress. So we want to have these poor communities stay out of poverty. We have to build in that resilience which means looking at things from a multi-sectoral dimension, looking at what is commonly called beyond GDP. And this is where the SDGs come in. The initial proposition of the SDGs, the foundational principle of the SDGs, was that the way you deliver on sustainable development is by evidencing, by acknowledging, by valuing the linkages between sectors, between sectors, between communities, between at different scales. So the SDGs are absolutely decisive in enabling countries and private sector and financial sector to really address development trajectories in a way that minimizes the externalities and can crowd in the development benefits. Because unless you address and understand those interlinkages and manage the trade-offs with not a short-term perspective that benefits few, but a long-term perspective that benefits the many, unless you do that, development becomes oftentimes a zero-sum game. And sustainability is about making, making development something very different than that. Uh, and that's why the SDGs are critical to the, what the bank is doing in terms of poverty eradication and keeping people out of poverty. Well, obviously a main challenge is that the way um, our minds, our communities, our economies, our societies are structured is very sector-based. Uh, and there's two silos, and that's one of the key reasons why sustainable development has not really been able to deliver on the promise that it promised over two or three decades ago. And that's again where the SDGs come in and trying to really break down those silos. Um, what the World Bank is doing about this and how it's addressing is that the bank has been restructured and certainly it has created 14 global practices to have a real technical depth in all of these different issues, these very complex issues. But the transformation is the fact that the bank is committed to working not within silos in each one of these global practices, but our DNA is to really foment and identify areas for cross-practice and collaboration, which translates into intersectoral approaches. And that's the kind of work that we need to do in countries. But obviously it's, it's a change of culture, it's a change of mindsets, it's a change of how we actually even do accounting of metrics to be able to really articulate those linkages. So it'll be difficult for many countries in terms of just because of the way institutions are set up. Uh, it will be challenging to come up with the metrics and we already see in the negotiations long discussions about the kind of indicators should be associated with the targets and the goals. But the dividends are huge. So I see all of these you know, sort of um, 
initial difficulties, if you will, something that will be investments because they will pay massive dividends over time if we're better able to understand and manage that complexity of development and not just go for the easy solutions or the minimalist approaches that might be quick fixes but sometimes don't address the more deep structural and systemic uh, factors or trends or issues that we need to address. And I think that that's the challenge, but it is also the opportunity.